my lovely, lovely imps, there is a schism, a schism, a civil war among the right wing right now. And we've talked about some aspects of this on stream before, you know, here and there. But let me tell you, it is getting to chef's kiss levels of interesting, okay? Let me start by talking about uh, infighting, okay? On this stream, the topic of infighting has come up a lot. Uh, and in fact, uh, in recent memory, there has been a lot of discussions of what we will call left-wing infighting. As many of you know, I consider myself on the political left. Uh, my viewpoints are liberatory. Uh, some people would call me uh, you know, I have a, a, a anarchist inspired philosophy. Some people would say that I'm libertarian, uh, like left libertarian, not obviously not right libertarian. That's a, a, a literally a, an oxymoron. Um, I don't really use any, uh, specific labels for myself, but my politics are very left wing inspired. And so as a result on this channel, we end up talking about left wing infighting pretty frequently. And, uh, there's a lot of frustration to be had among left-wing infighting, right? Uh, you know, if you're on the left at all, even if you're a liberal, even if you don't consider yourself, like, far left or anything like that, you can probably acknowledge that left-wingers, you know, they sort of fight a lot. There's a lot of arguing and, uh, you know, I mean, hell, lefties even sometimes cancel each other. It gets, it gets pretty messy over on the left. And I've always taken the position that uh, infighting is inevitable and completely natural. And especially, it's especially totally natural on the left-wing thing of side of things. Because left-wing ideologies are generally liberatory, or at least they uh, aspire to be liberatory. The goal of the left wing is for people to think freely, to be able to differ in opinions, um, and not have to fall in line behind a religious authority or a, a, a political authority, a single political authority. Um, it's natural that there's going to be some infighting. And what I usually say is that we should avoid being lethal in our infighting. Um, and, you know, I've, heard, I've been on record on this channel uh, talking about how uh, when people say, oh, the left infights worse than the right. Oh, you guys are fucking stupid. The left wing, uh, they're going to they're going to kill each other worse than the right will. The left is always uh, seized with infighting. I always have to tell people, whoa, 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 slow the hell down there, Buccarino. Whoa there, partner. Let's have a talk about infighting on the right. Because let me tell you, no, they fucking don't. The left does not infight more than the right. The left just infights more publicly, usually, than the right. And I say usually because, can I remind you, just real quick, hold on there, Hugo. Whoa there, buddy, pal, tiger. Uh, can, do you guys not remember the history of, of, of Christian religious warfare? Do you guys not remember the fact that, like, every single Christian church in America belongs to a different uh, delineation, a different, uh, what do they call them, a denomination? Right-wingers love nothing more than to, uh, than to fight with each other. They just, they're just very lethal about it. Okay, let's talk about it that way, because in the right, if you step out of line, you're not just having a difference of opinion, you're usually going to be disagreeing with God, okay? A lot of the right is religious. Even the secular part of the right are often, in the at the end of the day, still appealing to religious authority or some sort of religious-like authority. We'll talk about that more in the future. We're going to see some of that in just a minute. And you have to remember that uh, there's a little bit more, uh, there's a little bit more offense to be had if you are defying the absolute will of God or the absolute will of God's chosen prophet 
or the absolute will of God's chosen denomination than there is if you disagree. No matter how much people make fun of the left for canceling each other or for, you know, morally policing each other, the right wing basically invented sectarianism. There is nothing more, uh, more like historically ridiculous than looking at what far right authoritarian sects have done to one another in the name of their God. I mean, do you guys want to look into like, uh, into like far right hyper conservative, uh, like Islamic infighting? You want to look at far right, um, uh, 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 highly conservative, uh, Hindu, uh, Hindu infighting? It gets bad. Every single far right, con you know, hyper traditionalist conservative religion, they got to purge the ones who aren't good and they do it all the time. Okay, just remember that. And we're actually going through something similar in the United States right now. The, what we're going to be talking about today is, of course, very funny, but it's necessary to be able to understand the broader picture uh, in order to enjoy what we're the, the core issue that we're talking about today. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's just, I guess, you know what, let's talk about this and then we're going to, you know, sort of jump outwards and analyze some of the other, the other aspects of this uh, very, very silly situation that's going on. Okay. I'm going to bring up a couple of tweets here real quick for us to enjoy because, uh, have any of you heard of a, 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 uh, a right wing YouTuber by the name of the quartering? I have, I've heard of the quartering. Let me show you what the quartering looks like. The quartering is a YouTuber who goes by the name of Jeremy and his channel looks something like this. This is the quartering's channel. Okay. He's got, he's got this beard guy, you know? And all of his channels look kind of like this. You know, he's kind of known for having a very, uh, uh, let's just call it, he has a very unique uh, thumbnail style. You know, Elon Musk forced to use bodyguards in the bathroom as Twitter mocks him. Daily Wire expertly capitalizes on woke Hershey's ad. Go woke, go broke. Jimmy Kimmel's insane meltdown. Journalists rage. Teacher forces nine-year-old to be trans. Okay. Uh, the new quote-unquote woman. Hershey's disgusting new ad. Race swap Peter Pan destroyed. And of course, this guy right here who you see moving on the screen is, is the quartering. The quartering is also famous, of course, for pissing in his basement on stream after getting drunk, that he pissed in the drain on the floor of his basement uh, while he was streaming uh, because he likes to get really drunk while he's streaming and sometimes he just can't hold his bladder anymore. So he just sort of p pisses wherever he's standing, which, you know, very, very advanced behavior from these right-wingers. Um, anyway, the quartering has been a, a sort of figurehead. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Can we just take a look real quick? Uh, this guy has 1.49 million subscribers and 6.1 thousand videos uploaded, okay? 1.5 million subscribers on his main channel and 6,000 videos uploaded, okay? That's a big channel. The quartering is huge. His channel is enormous. Also, the quartering is, of course, very closely associated with another very, very large, uh, let's call them, we'll, we'll charitably call them a pop culture podcast called Geeks and Gamers. Uh, we're not even going to get into that whole, uh, rat's nest, but, uh, Geeks and Gamers is enormous and, and very well known. So, the quartering is not a small fry when it comes to right-wing influencers. He's not a small fry when it comes to, uh, to YouTube influencers. He's a, he's a pretty big guy. Uh, I, I, I'm not insulting his weight. As you can tell, I'm, I'm nice and chumby myself. I just mean that he's big as far as YouTube is concerned. Um, just to be clear. So nobody feels like I'm picking on him or anything like that. Did he also shit his pants? Is that true? Did he shit his pants? 
Well, maybe he shit his pants. I'm hearing reports that he may have also shit his pants. The important part is that the quartering is leaving the right. That's right, the quartering. The the guy who's sort of known for being the right wing Star Wars, uh, 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 Marvel, DC guy is fucking leaving the right. Now, to be fair, it's actually more that he's claiming that the right left him. But it's the same. It's the same basic thing. He's doing the same thing that people do when they say why I left the left, except he's doing it for the right. <laughs> Let me just show you some examples of this, okay? Here you go right here, okay? Enjoy. Oops, uh, I gotta move these. Well, here we go. I am 100% out on this new conservative push. Be mad about it. Spurg in my replies. I won't see it. There are dozens of creators you can follow for the charade that you seek. I am not going to pretend just to maintain a paycheck. This is a very bad road to take, and I am out. It doesn't get more blatant than that. He's he's done. He is done with the right, as far as he's concerned. The new conservative, Jeremy, the quartering, the famous basement pisser, is done with it. And why, you might ask? Well, let's find out. First off, there are loads of mid-level creators jumping on board because they are afraid of the backlash, and I don't blame them. I am taking plenty of heat, but I am very lucky and blessed that I don't need to worry about it. My viewers know who I am. I don't need to fake it. And then he says this, I've outed three major conservative creators and people still demand more. How many of these folks were liminal order folks? Ha 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 ha. Hmm. I am taking shit right out in front, kid. Right out in, prob in public. Now you might be wondering, what do you mean by outing people? Do you mean outing outing? Do you mean that... The quartering has gone scorched earth and has decided to literally out people on his side? And the answer is yes. Now, let me just take a moment to remind you what a lot of people on the right think about gay people and think about trans people. Well, of course, on the right, most people on the right don't actually think that trans people are people. They think that they are somehow less than people. They might not always say it exactly like that, but they will imply it very heavily. They will say, oh, trans people are all delusional and mentally ill. You shouldn't play into their delusions. They'll say all kinds of garbage like this, and they never actually provide an argument for why that's the case. Uh, of course, as they themselves are uh, uh, unbelievable hypocritical about gender themselves they do whatever the fuck they want which we're gonna get into here uh, but yeah they they don't treat them very well and of course when you go to the far right they hate gay people um, the people that we're gonna talk about today specifically uh, Mike Chernovich uh, Jack Posobiec and Elijah Schaefer are some of the most heinously anti-gay people uh, in the far right movement um, they are openly anti-gay they do not believe in gay marriage they believe in their own words that it is an affront to god they believe that you are going to hell if you are gay they believe that you deserve to be punished if you are gay they believe that you deserve to be marginalized if you are gay these people are demented okay uh, Elijah Schaefer himself is a neo-Nazi, and yes, I am comfortable in making that accusation. Of course, you can never truly prove what is in someone's mind, but Elijah Schaefer platforms neo-Nazis. He openly uh, does the Jewish question on his channel. These are wild people, okay? These, these people have extreme views, and what the quartering is, is <laughs> alleging is that they're all a bunch of hypocrites. So let's start with the first one. Here we go down here. Mike Chernovich loves trans cock. Now you might go, 
well, what's wrong with liking trans cock? And of course, there's absolutely nothing with tra with liking trans cock. I, of course, love trans cock, and I'm sure many of you in my audience do as well. And if you don't, you probably will in the future. Uh, it's it's wonderful. Some of the best cocks in the world belong to trans people. Let me tell you, I can assure you of that. Okay, um, but see, Mike Chernovich, his entire grift has been anti-trans for a very, very, very long time, okay? I mean, like, vi virulently anti-trans. So it is a bit weird that Mike Chernovich, this guy who is super, super anti-trans, would also secretly want to slurp on that fucking rod. They want to just guzzle that trans dick. It is interesting. And of course, Jeremy doesn't leave out the receipts. In fact, Mike Chernovich wrote an entire article about sucking trans cock. Do people not do an ounce of research? <laughs> Which is amazing. And of course, this is a screenshot. I am not going to read this entire article, but it is a screenshot of a, a, a detailed story of Mike Chernovich having sex with a trans woman and sucking cock. The guy who supposedly hates trans people, who thinks they're delusional, is of course himself obsessed with them. Not just on a political level, but on a sexual level. And that's something that you're going to come to realize, if you don't already know this about conservatives, that uh, they have a psychosexual attachment uh, uh, to everything that their politics center around. Uh, th this is, of course, something that people have pointed out all the time, where, uh, you know, anti-gay preachers turn out to be gay, um, anti-trans people end up being trans themselves, uh, they're in denial, and the way that they deal with it is by becoming virulently uh, anti-gay to, to try and cover for themselves or or maybe even to convince themselves that no, I'm not gay. I don't love cock. No, I don't want to get pounded by a trans dommy mommy. I don't want to be cuddled and held and then have my throat blown open by a giant trans cock. They want to, they desperately don't want you to know that. They desperately want to believe that it's not true about them. But of course, it is true. We can keep going here, of course. Yep, says the quartering. Wife cheaters, fake religious, trans cock lovers. This is a large chunk of the right wing. Source, I've hung out with all of these people IRL. Ha 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 Little bit demented. And of course, the quartering also says... Lots of panic in my DMs. I don't care. I can't wait for tomorrow's live at 9 a.m. Now, we didn't see the live stream today. We might go check it out at some point. But uh, he certainly said a lot on Twitter. Let's just put it that way. Um, <laughs> let me just show you some more of these. Because he kept going. This is barely even the beginning of him, of him going hard on these people, okay? I grabbed a whole bunch of these, okay? Hold on. Let me just show you. Here we go. Here's another one. Ready? Twitter has been working overtime to gaslight me into questioning my own principles, but it's never been more clear to me that I am currently that I am right. The left called me alt-right just a year ago, and now the right is calling me a leftist now. My positions have not even changed. Do you see what I mean about him saying I'm leaving the right, but really the right left me? Stay mad, get in my mentions and whine about how you're unfollowing, but the right-wing commentator space is full of godless, degenerate, tr this is a slur obviously, trans-chasing, spouse-cheating, drug-addicted hypocrites who preach the exact opposite. You getting mad doesn't change this fact. Also, just keep an eye out on these on these uh, 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 view numbers and, and uh, uh, engagement numbers, okay? These got out to a lot of people. Remember how I mentioned the quartering is a huge channel? Well, the quartering going rogue is actually not very good for a lot of these people. We're going to talk about that some more. Let's keep going. 
Loads of right-wing commentators are either closeted gays or trans chasers. Look, I accept and support them, but many of these people you think are based in red pill love trans cock or just cock in general. Deal with it. Look up your based in red pill and America first heroes and terms like cat boys. This is a direct call out of Nick Fuentes. Of course, uh, Nick Fuentes is a neo-Nazi uh, who was most recently uh, sort of publicly associated with uh, uh, Kanye West, uh, aka Ye West, going on an unhinged anti-Semitic rant in which he openly declared that he loved the Nazis and loved Hitler. Uh, and of course, uh, at the time, his sort of manager for that was Nick Fuentes. Uh, Nick Fuentes also, just so that you know, uh, publicly went on a definitely not a date with a Nazi catboy where they definitely, definitely did not fuck. Even though they spent the night together, Nick Fuentes paid to have a, a, a gay catboy Nazi sex worker fly out to his house, paid for it, then spent the entire day flirting with him on camera, denying that they were actually flirting, touching each other, and then they disappeared for eight hours to spend the night together. They def definitely didn't have sex. Um, and of course, uh, there is literally hundreds of logs of Nick Fuentes on various discords begging for catboy images, uh, for gay catboy images. So that's what he's referring to uh, right here. Uh, yeah, uh, let's continue. Uh, let's continue with what Quartering has to say here. Quartering says, the modern right wing, quote unquote, is controlled and psyoped. They are worse NPCs than the left. True, but that's always been true. The right are the biggest NPCs on the planet. Well, how much more of an NPC can you be than saying, yes, my Lord, I believe in it because my Lord told me to. The Lord in heaven has told me that it is good to have a child wife. And then you go, isn't that a, don't you think that's bad for the child? And they go, no, the Lord above has told me and it is not my place to question it. All right-wingers are fucking NPCs by their nature. It is in their nature to be an NPC. You don't want to be an NPC. That's why you're on the left. If you're watching this and you're a right-winger, get the fuck out of there because you don't want to be an NPC, do you? Or maybe you do. Guess what? Did you know that you can have more fun being somebody's submissive NPC-like drone baby? You can actually be horny and having a good time. You can have a hot lady smack you with a stick and tell you to go do your homework or to take care of your chores. And you can actually have fun without having to be a self-hating homophobe or a self-hating transphobe. The left just got you. The left's got you covered on all sides, my friends. All sides. Get the fuck out of the right. Let's continue. Most of these pundits love cocks. They love drugs. They love cheating on their spouses. If this makes you mad, then unfollow, lol. If you can't see the obvious, then there's nothing I can do to help you. If you want to get mad at me, you want to spurg out in my comments, well, I've seen it all. I've hung out with these people. I've partied with these people. They are not living in God's image. They are as degenerate as they pretend to fight. Ha 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 ha. And then, of course, this is quartering directly picking on Elijah Schaefer. Elijah Schaefer having a complete and utter meltdown over a pride flag sticker, like pride flag packing tape on his, uh, on his box and the courting is like this looks like a bad photoshop i can't find a single other picture like this have you basically implying that elijah schaefer is just making it up here we go right here and just so that i can remind people i stand by my principles of course i want to protect kids but the hyper focus on trans shit however is exactly what they want you wasting time on that's what's trending on twitter not ukraine not the epstein list not east palestine that in case you haven't figured it out, I have finally realized that Twitter is pointless. No matter what the weird backlash that happens here, it literally doesn't matter. Boobs are what matter, not Twitter. Boobs will save the planet. Just cringe. And here's another one. This is what I am talking about. This is the new right. Notice that Notice that language. Sorry, it's, it's a little hard to see up here. This is the new right. 
The fact that we disagree on this isn't a big deal to me. Why do you have to assume I'm drunk in order to possibly understand it? And then this person un uh, unsubscribes and they say, well, I'll live. So, Elijah Schaefer, Jack Posobiec, Nick Fuentes, and Mike Chernovich all directly called out by the quartering. The quartering literally outing them all as gay, uh, not just gay, but also gay and also trans chasers uh, to the entirety of his enormous audience. Uh, absolutely fascinating times that we live in. And it's interesting to me. Now, um, I, I should be 100% clear about one thing real quick. Being, leaving the right does not mean that you have joined the left. Uh, it, in fact, we can just tell just by looking at the quarterings videos. I don't think there's any chance that he's going to stop being, uh, fucking disgusting. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a single chance that this guy's going to stop like being the same type of grifter that, uh, that he has been. But I think it tells you something about the current state of the far right. They're in crisis. Yeah, he literally said, my fans know me and my content. He's not changing anything about the way that he goes around that. He's still going to be dick riding the shit out of Elon Musk. But what he has indicated is that he is willing to burn a large portion of his audience, which he sees as disgusting and insufferable. And I want to talk about that on a broader level because um, I've talked about this in the past. I've mentioned this in the past. Um, I've mentioned how the secular Republicans, the, uh, the right wingers, the conservatives who are not all into the Jesus stuff, the ones who, uh, who are kind of like mildly pretend to be okay with gay people are, uh, they're in a dangerous spot right now. A really, really, uh, a really, really dangerous spot right now. Uh, because a bunch of factions of the far right are basically in the middle of what I would like to call a religious, uh, like a psychotic uh, fundamentalist revival. In the far right, um, in, in Trump's faction, Christian nationalism as a term, like that term specifically, Christian nationalism, is more popular now than it has ever been. And what that means, by the way, the ideology of Christian nationalism is the idea that you should have a leader essentially ordained by God to impose Christianity as the dominant culture and the dominant religion in the United States. They are a group of people who do not actually give a shit about anything that currently exists. They do not care about the Constitution. They, they will cite the Constitution only insofar as that they believe that it was written by godly men. They believe that the Constitution was written by God-believing men, but they don't actually believe in any of the text of it. They just like to say, well, look, God made something that you guys like. That's about all that they care about. And this faction has been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have, like, checked in or thought about or heard about Christianity lately, but uh, Christianity doesn't play nice with other wor worldviews. Christianity believes that if you don't believe in Christianity, if you don't accept Jesus as your God, if you do not become a Christian, you are going to hell. If you are if you are not pushing Christianity, you are fighting against God. It is in the text of the Bible that if you are not with God, then you are against him. And let me remind you what the strongest faction of the right in the United States has always been. It has always been the religious right. And when I say the religious right, that means the Christian right. They are the strongest electoral faction. They are the most passionate voters on the right. They are the ones who are most likely to be motivated to specific actions. They have infrastructure, the likes of which the, re the secular right cannot even believe. Okay. The religious right has a nationwide network of churches that channel funding directly into the pockets of political campaigns that they desire, that channel voters in like a laser, okay? 
Uh, as many of you know, when I was younger, I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian cult. It took me a very long time to get out of there. It was a fucked up experience. It was demented. But one thing I can tell you from my experience there, and I've talked about this on stream many times once again, but uh, is that they wield churches in America, wield political power like nobody else. The people in those churches are socially attached to the church in ways that you probably don't even imagine. If you've never been a fundamentalist, if you've never been in an extreme church environment, the people who attend extremist churches, the people who are into fundamentalism, the church becomes their life. If the pastor asks them to vote on something, they will do it. They will treat it as if it's God's mission to them. And the quartering is realizing that. The quartering for all of his uh, dishonesty and slobbiness, for all of his uh, uh, for all of his slow to the uptake, has realized, oh shit, I am going to have to pretend to be a Christian if I don't cut ties as soon as possible. He has realized, oh my God, even though. He literally, we can look at his videos and we can see him talking about COVID, uh, COVID disinformation. We can see him talk, making fun of trans people. We can see him like just directly be doing transpho explicit transphobia on his, uh, on his videos. We can see him just tons and tons of it. He's realized that these motherfuckers will not let him make content the way even he wants to. He is not even right enough because what the Christian right wants is God warriors. They want people who are willing to go full anti-Semitic. They are willing to go full eradication, eliminationist rhetoric. They want people who are crusaders. That's what they're pushing for. The, the far right wants everybody to be like these groiper TPUSA freaks, okay? That's all that they want. And Jeremy, it might be too late for him. We'll find out. But Jeremy has realized that, oh my God, that's the direction that the right is going. He even openly says it. The new conservative, new right. He's identified, he's finally seen the gigantic writing on the wall that the rest of us, of course, have been able to see forever, which is that we are in the middle of a... Uh, attempted Christian retakeover that these guys, these religious zealots who people like, like Ben Shapiro, who will go on rants about how Christ, how trans people and gay people are cultists who demand human sacrifice. And he will never, he'll never even tell you what he means by that. He literally said that. I was just watching earlier a Ben Shapiro video in which he claimed that trans people and gay people demand human sacrifice in order to perpetuate their cult. These types of people, he realizes now, are going to not accept him. He won't be allowed. He can't just sit around making Star Wars videos where he says go woke go broke guys oh guys hold on let me just get on go woke go broke yeah you know go woke they went woke and they got broke and then shuts off the camera he can't do that in a world full of christians that the christians will fucking burn him at the stake if they think that he's the wrong type of uh that he's not godly and he's now realized that and his answer is to try and burn some of the other big figures now, whether this will actually work is is totally up in the air. It's it's really really hard to know whether he'll have any success with this sort of thing. Um, it seems to me uh, that he won't, and the reason for that is that uh, of course, as we should all be able to know, if if you're even slightly familiar with the history of the church. Uh, the church will literally cover up, especially the Catholic church and the Southern Baptist 
uh, convention. These are two, uh, one of them's Catholic, one of them's evangelical. These are two of the largest religious organizations in the world. Both of them have covered up uh, scandals involving child sexual abuse on a massive level that has now been well confirmed, well documented. It has been going on for years and years and years, as long as the church has existed, and they cover it up. So the truth is, they don't really care. They cover that shit up because, uh, because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters in their mind is that God's kingdom is advanced on earth. And that's part of what makes these fucking movements so sinister, of course, is because they are the most Machiavellian. They are the most uh, ends justify the means ideologies in the world. What are you going to do? Defy God? You think you're going to risk weakening God's advance for a couple of random kids who've been abused by a priest? Of course not. God demands victory. You, you march forward. So of course they cover for these people. They've always done this through all of history. The church always protects its own. Always. So is the quarter pounder leaving the right? Yes, he explicitly said, I am done with the new right, the new conservative movement. I'm done. I'm out. There's no way he's done with the right. Well, obviously, he's obviously going to keep being a right winger. There's no doubt that he's going to keep being a right winger, but what he's declaring is that he's done with the movement. It's the same. It's the exact same thing as why I left the left. They were never a part of the left. They were always right. They were just, they're, they're being the same. They're just making a stink about it, but that's what they do. And also I want to point out something more, uh, uh, which is, which is of course that this reflects a, uh, a, larger uh issue a larger schism on the right how many people here have heard of a, a a little guy named meatball ron anybody heard of ron desantis in recent memory i bet you have i bet you've heard a lot of people talking about ron desantis uh well ron desantis is apparently he seems to be ready to challenge donald trump for ownership and rulership of the right wing now, as we all know, anybody who hasn't been asleep under a rock for, you know, the last uh, fucking eight years should know basically everything there is to know about Donald Trump. You couldn't fucking ignore it. Uh, Donald Trump and his bullshit was on every single newsstand, every single social media feed, every single everywhere you look for the last eight years for it's just been constant Donald Trump from the moment he started stepping into the political sphere to when he took office to his his refusal to step down to the coup that he attempted to have happen so that he could maintain control Donald Trump managed to spellbind the 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 far right in a way that we haven't seen in a very long time uh, there was never the type of energy for George Bush or anybody as there was for Donald Trump. I mean, hell, you could even argue that Donald Trump managed to spellbind the Republican Party more even than Reagan did. Of course, uh, people venerate Reagan, but at the time, you know, there was a lot more controversy around Reagan uh, at the time. He's sort of been venerated historically as this figure, but during the time, he was never as as popular to the same degree as, as Donald Trump. Donald Trump has a true cult of personality. And of course, a lot of people have pointed out that Donald Trump is kind of an idiot and his followers are also kind of stupid. Um, his followers are demented and they're obsessed with things that don't win them elections. They got creamed by Sleepy Joe. Fucking Joe Biden beat Donald Trump absolutely deranged uh and and of course following in the footsteps of donald trump uh the republicans obsessed with culture war issues got fucking clapped in the midterms remember when all of the right wingers were saying the red wave is coming the red wave is coming oh here comes the red wave and it just never materialized they ended up just getting fucking slapped well, they still keep going anyway. The cult of Donald Trump is as strong as ever. Now, Ron DeSantis has come to the forefront, and Ron DeSantis is a little bit more of a, let's call him clean. 
He's a clean politician. He's more uh, strategic. He believe you know, he, he, he still is all about those culture war issues. He still goes on rants about trans people, but you know, he, he, he doesn't do all the mud flinging. He doesn't do all of the, uh, the cult of personality stuff. He's a little bit cleaner. He wears a tie, you know, a nice tie and he doesn't do silly dances on the stage. He's a, he's a politician guy. And so a lot of the, uh, let's just say the, the sort of, uh, establishment the 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 more the anti-trump guys have all gotten behind ron DeSantis. but there's a problem ron DeSantis is really struggling um ron DeSantis in recent polls of the republican party only got 20 percent of the polling of, of the poll support donald trump was still pulling 60 percent like Holy shit, like Donald Trump is still creaming Ron DeSantis. And people are saying, thank God, but I want you to remember something, which is what Donald Trump's side of the margin represents, okay? Uh, Donald Trump's side is the re religious right. The religious right is on board with Donald Trump. The evangelical freaks, the Nick Fuenteses, the Catholic extremists, the uh, fundamentalists, the conversion therapy advocates, the, the, the trans exterminationists, they're all on Trump's side. That's why he's winning, because he still courts the most insane people. And I want you to remember that these people don't have a shot in hell electorally. They are getting creamed electorally because they are a minority of people. But let me remind you what they did when they lost the last election. Let me remind you uh, uh, what previous similar movements in the past have done when they realize that they can't win by numbers, that they can't win by a fair game. So this conflict between the quartering and Nick Fuentes, this conflict between uh, the quartering and the new right is just a microcosm of the broader schism in the Republican Party. I've talked about this many times. I've even mentioned it slightly in this stream, which is that the right loves to do purges. They have to do purges. It is essential to their ideologies. If you are in a, a, if you hold a worldview that states that your view is the correct, godly, God-blessed way of doing things, you have to get rid of the non-believers. They have to be defeated and they either have to be humiliated and brought into line, or if they don't, they have to be eliminated. You guys remember what happened to uh, people like Milo Yiannopoulos? You guys, we we here on this channel have followed the story of Milo Yiannopoulos. We know how far that guy fell. That guy went from being, uh, uh, from talking at every university in America, getting paid speakers fees in the tens of thousands on a daily basis to a literal nobody who could barely get a job working for Kanye West for fucking two weeks. Vosh was just saying how Blair White is going to be the next target soon. Blair White is already a target. In fact, if you look right here, take a look at this. Let's roll up. Let's roll up. Let's roll up. Blair White getting threats on her life over a simple troll post. Arguably, four days ago, this is what started the quartering's whole meltdown is that he spoke up to defend Blair White. Blair White is getting attacked now more than ever as the Republican Party obviously continues to progress uh, into its eliminationist rhetoric. Let me just show you something real quick. Hold on, I'm gonna, we're gonna watch a quick clip and I want you to think on this, okay? I'm gonna show this to you real quick, okay? You, some of you have probably seen this, but we're gonna watch it for a good reason. Let's watch this real quick with me, okay? No middle way in, there can be no middle way in dealing with transgenderism. It is all or nothing. If transgenderism is true, if men really can become women, then it's true for everybody of all ages. 
If transgenderism is false, as it is, if men really can't become women, as they cannot, then it's false for everybody, too. And if it's false, then we should not indulge it, especially since that indulgence requires taking away the rights and customs of so many people. If it is absurd, just so we're clear, insane, the idea that being accepting towards people who are different than you requires undoing your customs. That's a bit of a self-report, but let's continue. It's false, then for the good of society, and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. Michael Nels uh, is a Daily Wire uh, contributor and a uh, 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 weird wax uh, wax golem. Um, and uh, he was speaking there at CPAC. Now, I want to note some things about CPAC. First of all, Trump also spoke at CPAC. And Fox News this year, uniquely, has refused to attend CPAC. Why? Well, because... They are uh, in a feud with the Trump faction. So they are refusing to participate. Do you see what I'm talking about, about this growing schism? There is a schism on the right, and it has to be resolved. They can't proceed without resolving this schism. And on one side of the schism, you have people like Michael Knowles calling for the total eradication of transgenderism from the public life, which we all know exactly what that means. And also, I'll point out, we also know what that means for people like Blair White. It means that the time has finally come when their pick me card stops having any value whatsoever. The inevitable hour that every single person on the planet knew would come, the time when you are no longer accepted whatsoever on the uh, on the parts of the right that you once courted, uh, once courted has occurred. People are, first of all, we've already seen for literal years, we've seen people be horrible to Blair White, and she keeps going anyway under the belief that, well, you know, I'm one of the good ones. I'm one of the good ones. I'm one of the good ones. Over and over and over again, and it's only getting worse. They are threatening her. They see her as a, uh, they see her as a, uh, a perfect encapsulation of everything that they hate. They see her as a representation of, de of degeneracy. We know where this is going. So it's very interesting, isn't it? We have certainly seen a strange progressive uh, or, or progression of events in recent times. And this schism is only going to get worse. Now, I want to point out to you that the Republicans could not win an election when they were united behind Trump. When Donald Trump was the only candidate going up against Joe Biden, they still lost. They cannot win anything in, if they are split. So if we think, if we use our political brains just a tiny bit, if we just flex that political muscle, there's only one way for this to go. One of the factions has to be defeated. And uh, which faction do you think has stronger convictions? Do you think that it's the Tim Pool, uh, uh, the quartering, I'm in, I like to talk about Star Wars and DC Comics uh, uh, and complain about, about women in my comic book side? Or do you think it's the ones who are telling their followers that, they ha that angels are going to join them in a holy war against the trans people who need to be eradicated from public life? Which faction do you think has a stronger set of beliefs? And which faction do you think is more likely to succeed when they know that they can't win electorally? 
Do you think that that uh, who do you think is more likely to uh, to participate in a January sixth event? Do you think that it's Jeremy the quartering, or do you think it's Nick Fuentes? Well, I can already tell you the answer. Jeremy the quartering was playing pinball in the basement while Nick Fuentes was at the Capitol. Will this schism leave the the right weaker than before? That depends on a lot of different things, doesn't it? Uh, personally. I think that this schism has the potential to leave the right weaker, but it greatly depends. It greatly depends on how well the left is able to organize while the right is infighting. If the left is unable to uh, to co build a coalition to block out the right, to prepare to resist and prevent right-wing violence, uh, to prepare in advance to protect vulnerable people, uh, then it could leave the right stronger. Because if the right is able to uh, to basically do a purge, to purge the unfaithful, uh, then all that will be left are zealots and people who, are, who have been hurt by the zealots so much that they are bowing down. That is exactly what we've seen in religious movements in history. It's exactly what we've seen in fucking Nazi Germany. You can see this mo this this cycle with right-wing movements all throughout history. If they're allowed to do their purge, if they're allowed to force to to instill fear to the degree that everyone bows down on the right and they all go along with this demented shit, then you end up with mass violence. Then you end up with uh, with with the most demented uh, uh, political uh, uh, war machine that you can imagine. You end up with people who literally believe that there are angels holding their arms up into a Nazi salute. Uh, those people are the ones who they will put into office. Those people are the people that will rally together. So now more than ever, it is incredibly important that lefties learn to work together and fight fucking hard against the right. Lefties need to strike harder now than ever. They need to get ready. That means all of you who are listening, all you lefties out there, listen to the rhetoric that the, that the Michael Nowell side is putting forward. Listen to the rhetoric that these people are putting forward. Even the quartering is getting scared of it. The quartering is now trying to burn as many bridges as possible so that he can keep making his fucking uh, Baby Yoda Grogu fucking bullshit, okay? So think and find what you can do to push back against this shit. Find what you can do to make sure trans people are safe. Find what you can do to make sure that gay people are safe. Find what you can do to ensure that these motherfuckers don't take power. Find what you can do to make sure that these people are deplatformed. These these demented genocide screamers. Because we know what their world looks like. We know what their world looks like. You guys telling me that a world uh, uh, where where trans transgenderism is eliminated is eradicated from the public life is going to be a nice looking world? We know what that shit looks like. And you know what's funny? These motherfuckers, of course, the, the, the grand picture thing is that, as always, Nazis, fascists, these people are too stupid to recognize that the world that they supposedly want is a heinous and miserable world. Just let's, let's wrap it all back around and remember that four of the most far-right people that you can imagine have just been outed by one of their former allies as being massively, massively homosexual, massively, massively into uh, trans people who they hate. They hate trans people and yet they want to be with trans people. These people cannot live the way they even want to live. They live in a perpetual, miserable state of denial. They can't live the way that they want to live. They have to, they have to fucking hate, hate, hate all the time. Their world sucks. But they insist on it because they are propelled by a twisted ideology. They are propelled by fears of hell. They are propelled by hatred. They are propelled by stupidity. Because the only way they know how to solve any problem is violence and domination and hatred. We know what their world looks like. 
and we have to fight it with everything that we can, okay? And all of you out there who are listening right now, okay? I am simply I am simply a voice. I am the the radio operator, okay? I am the one putting out the signal and you are hearing the signal, but it is you out there with your myriad talents. There are 650 people listening to this right now. That is amazing. Don't forget to like the stream and subscribe so that I can keep broadcasting the signal. Thank you very much. But all of you out there, you have unique talents. You have unique life context. There are Things that you can do that I will never be able to know exactly what you can do. What I can do is I can get you a, I can get up and climb up onto the tower and I can look around and I can make sure that you're hearing the signal. But it's up to you guys to, to, to connect with each other. It's up to you guys to take the actions that you can to make sure this signal translates into a better world. None of us want to see a world where trans people are eradicated from public life. None of us want to see a world, fuck, even Jeremy the Quartering doesn't want to see a world where gay people can't get married anymore. After all, how many times has he talked about his gay dads? Have you guys seen what they're pushing right now? Right now, there are multiple states trying to push anti-gay marriage. They're trying to roll back fucking gay marriage and they might succeed. How do you think Elon Musk will play in this schism? I think Elon Musk's role in this schism is declining by the day and that he knows it. I think that, uh, that, that Elon Musk's age has passed. He, he did succeed in disrupting Twitter and it cost him dearly, but he is such a cringy, uh, yuck, yuck Reddit idiot that I don't think that he has much relevance in the, in the near future, except for, uh, m ensuring that Twitter remain, remains a, a hub of misinformation, but we can be smarter than that. We don't have to spend all our time on Twitter. We don't have to spend all our time on compromised platforms. We can build connections elsewhere. Many of you already have. Many of you in my audience have built real, lasting, solid, social, not parasocial, social connections by connecting through Discord, by connecting through uh, directly to one another, talking to one another in DMs, becoming actual friends, building resilience. Remember just a couple of weeks ago, we watched the, uh, we watched the monkey movie, Apes Together Strong. You want to know why Apes Together Strong? Apes Together Strong, Lefties Together Strong, because if you are connected to other people, if you are holding one another up, nobody can hurt you. Or if they hurt you, there's a bunch of other people who are going to care that you were hurt. That's the power of the social connection. This is why lefties embrace social connection. It's why we embrace a social worldview. Because we acknowledge that together we are stronger. Even if we ourselves are weak, when we connect with others, we become infinitely stronger. If we choose now to be awake, if we choose now to actually decide to connect, to build connections now, to push back now, then we can divert a future that nobody wants to see. And we will have the sublime satisfaction of knowing that we never have to live through another fucking Holocaust, or we never have to live through another fucking right-wing Christian upheaval where you can't make a movie where the main character says a swear word because that's unchristian. That we won't have to live through a future where gay people can't be depicted on the TV screen because that's unchristian. We know that world fucking sucks and our actions right now are more important than ever.